Hello noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. Today we are talking about the language called Furlan, which is spoken in the northern Italian region of Friuli Venezia Giulia. Or if you are a half as busy as they are, considering how much they work up there, just call it Friuli. Now this video is a little bit of a homage to part of my family since my father is from Udine. But where is Friuli and if my dad is from there, am I not already like fluent in it? No. <laughs> no. Bandi, that's all I know. Okay, as you already know, I'm Sicilian from Palermo, so I'm from the southwest region of Italy, and instead Friuli is in the northeast, so literally opposite. Seriously, my dad never really used it at home, so I wasn't really exposed to it. I heard it like a couple of times, but no exposure whatsoever. Fun fact, my father spent over 40 years in Sicily. He still has his original accent. Like, people around him go, Get a manchani mini in China motona, da va bene, amoni. And that's how he responds. Bene, bene, bom bom, bem, bem, bom, bom, facciamo così, bem, bem, bom, bom. He never lost it, he never will, and neither should he. Okay, but how different is this regional language, not a dialect? Well, um, very different. I mean, if you think about it, Sicily is southwest, Friuli is northeast, you can't get as far away as that. So, how much can I understand? Well, how about, I almost destroyed everything, how about we try it? Let's start with this video. Please ignore the politics about it. I don't care about that. Just listen to what he says. Che la Costituzione non è fatta di numeri perfetti, ma deve essere fatta da criteri perfetti. Presidente, io penso che la Costituzione è una roba differente di noi. Io penso che la Costituzione sia una roba più grande. Penso che dovresti indurci a rispettarla e non ostinare No, non può parlare, deve parlare in italiano. Deve parlare in italiano. Okay, so this is interesting because regardless of what political party this person is speaking for, that does not matter. It's completely relevant for the purpose of this video. What happened is significant. First of all, let's examine it linguistically speaking, and then we'll dive a little bit into social linguistics. So linguistically speaking, in the first part he spoke Italian. Then he moved, if you want to check that part, I'll link the video in the description. Then he re basically repeated the same thing, but in Furlan. So, how much could I understand? Well, I could recognize some words like constitution, sounded almost the same. He also calls the, the president, he says president, he says constitution, io pense, è una roba differente, like all of that I can recognize. So, this one was actually a little easier, at least the beginning, but then he went off into a series of words that I couldn't recognize, and that's when he went completely blank. So, as a first reaction, I'm noticing that like there are some words that I recognize because they basically sound like Italian without the final vowel, which is actually quite typical of several northern uh, regional languages. But then some of the sentences and words become completely unintelligible for me as a southern. Now, the little social linguistic aspect that I wanted to raise is the fact that this person was basically asked by the president, I suppose, of this assembly uh, to absolutely not use a regional language. Because I think the message was that we need to defend the importance of regional varieties and language minorities, which I absolutely support as a message. The concept of preserving the richness of linguistic varieties uh, within what are usually referred to as dialects, even though they're not, this is a full-on language, in the sense that a person should never be made to feel ashamed of its cultural linguistic inheritance. So, people from Friuli, be proud of your language. Let's jump into another video and see how much we can understand. Okay, go. Buonasera a tutti e a tutti. Ben chiatats per queste puntate di Viaggi in Friuli, una trasmissione. Okay, so so far I understood um, good evening to everyone. I think she said it for both male and female. And then she said welcome back to this episode of something that I actually kind of forgot. Trasmissione curata da Arlef, Agenzia Regionale per Lengue Furlane. Yeah, I understood this part. A broadcast made by this Arlef, which is a, a, an agency for the, I believe she said it now, but something about the Furlan language. In collaboration with Telefriuli. In collaboration with Telefriuli, yeah. Voi offevelarin des caratteristiques de Lengue Furlane, de sos origini. It's interesting that she's saying, she's calling it Lengue, and I, I imagine it means lingua. So language, uh, so I can still recognize it even though it's different. But then again, I also kind of know the context now, so that clearly makes it easier. Perhaps if I had heard someone say just that word on the phone with zero context, uh, I might have not recognized it. But then again, if they say lenge furlane, then I do recognize it. So, uh, so far, so good. E de so grande letterature, anche de so tutele 
e da imprestito che vien a disposizione per scrivere. Per... So, the last part I didn't understand, only something about writing it. But then she did say, she did talk about the tradition, and then she's talking about the origins of the Furlan language and the literature. Um, very interesting. Yeah, so far I'm understanding. I think I've just been lucky though. Director de Arlef, Agenzie Regional Pelenghe Furlane, Francesca Battistutta dal Sporter Regional Pelenghe Furlane e Marco Torresin, sempre de Arlef. Ben chiatas, ben vignos. Prim- it's so interesting because uh, yeah, I'm recognized, I'm understanding also from the context that she's saying, the way she's saying welcome to, to, to the people and then she's obviously naming. Uh, let, let's go a little deeper into the discussion though. Ma prim di tacca. Ma prima di tacca. But before di tacca, I don't know what that means. So before doing something, maybe before beginning, before st- before we start, but that would be a contextual guess. Dal mondo, dal furlan, vi ho din con che servizi qual cale il quadri de slenghis minoritaris feveladis in Europe. So she's going to talk about the minority languages in Europe, but that's all I understood. So I understand the context, but there are a lot of other things she said in there. Uh, a few other words that I got, I got a little confused. La presenza di una lingua è è un tra i sensi più distintivi di una cultura e di un popolo. So the presence of a language is one of the distinguishing factors of a culture and a people. I understood that. L'Europa è ha una grande ricchezza linguistica. So Europe has a great linguistic richness. Di fatto il numero dei slenghi sfeveladi ha son passe cent. I don't know what feveladis means, so I'm missing the verb. But she's saying that basically there are more than, I think she said, a hundred uh, languages in Europe. Un evore di plui rispetto al numero de slenghi ufficiali de Union Europeane. Hmm. She's saying more than the official number of languages of the European Union, but I missed the first part. No, no idea what that means. A son circa 60 milions che adoprin ogni di una lingue che fa parte di una comunità di lingue minoritarie. Yep, I understood everything there. I think this must be easier because it's very formal. So this one actually went a lot better than I thought, like a lot better than I thought. But then again, there is some sort of inconsistency with what I remember in my own personal experience when I went to Friuli. So the explanation must be the one I said. Let's try and test it. There we go. Allora, in Friulano c'è una storia carina ed è ambientata in Austria. Allora un giorno Elio Kreigero mi ha detto ma sapete voi che alle un posto in, in Austria là che le, gnotte, le, le, le messe di mie gnotte non comincia mie gnotte come perduto. Right, so um, it is a little harder to understand like a storyteller I'm noticing. He's talking about some place in Austria, I recognize that. I don't know what gnot means. Let's, let's see if I can understand it if I listen to it more. Right now I'm a little lost. I noi e di zumo in Austria, come in Friuli, mi zignotti, mi zignotti per tutti. No, no, la dite come... Mi zignotti, mi zignotti. Is it mezzanotte? Is it midnight? Maybe? Ma io ti spieghi anche il parce. And I'll explain to you why. Interesting that they say parce instead of perché. So the, the, the k becomes a ch sound, but I still recognize it. For the miracle of the magic wizard Hogwarts. But he's saying I'll explain to you why. Let's see why. In this place of the, the house, my picture, like four houses, I was a bit young. I understood this part, he's saying that this, uh, that this is a small like village in Austria. He said just four houses. I recognize that because even though he pronounced like chiasis instead of case, I still recognize it because we have that expression in standard Italian, quattro case, uh, meaning four houses when you want to say it's just a very small uh, settlement, community, village, what have you. And uh, so I recognize the expression even though it was in Furlan. Che di tanchai, 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 se fa sempre un maio nut per Gesù Bambin. Gesù Bambin. Okay, so I understood nothing but Jesus as a child. Jesus as a child. Well, it, it, from the title I know that this is a Christmas tale. So yeah, this must be the Christmas connection, but I only understood Gesù Bambino, which of course, as I say, northern regional language, Gesù Bambin. They cut the last vowel. So now he said that Jesus, the child Jesus was called and for, he said Nadal, sounds like Natale, must be for Christmas. Ogni volta per messe di mezzegnot, he metteva io quist, quist maion. Messe de mezzegnot. Midnight mass, maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong and it means milk and cookies. Quisti dut, in mut che il frut non ves fred. Allora, 
ogni anno passa, 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 diventa veramente tan vecchio, tan vecchio. E una sera, sempre le gnotte prima di Natale, sì, le, le, le gnotte del 24. Yes, gnotte must mean night. I think I was right, because now he's saying, he said something I didn't understand, and then he said, but one night, one evening, in the night, in the gnotte before Christmas. So, yes, gnotte must mean night. Now, now I recognize, now I'm, I'm, I'm like, my, my confidence is higher. C'è quattro, e io lì che faccio il maio nuta di sera, sinta tu qua, e va a viaggi, e io le muardo. E io dico, molto di venire via, perché ormai si stanno vecchi, e io ore, no? No, 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 io faccio le vecchie, già. Zero. Nothing. He lost me, completely. No. Nope. Nothing. Couldn't translate it to save my life. Alle sono di sera, io gli faccio il maio nuta, io fin mio genio non vengo. No, 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 non si discute con me, sumo, io sono... Eh, non si discute con me. <laughs> I only understood, non si discute con me, which means you don't argue with me. That's the only thing I understood. Everything else before, I just understood. Bang, bang. Right, so um, how much could I understand? Well, as you can see, he lost me a few times and this feels more like the kind of experience I actually had when I was in Friuli. And of course, we were just communicating in Italian. I was speaking with my accent, they were speaking with their accent, and that was it. But uh, a couple of times we tried it. Uh, and perhaps I should invite, if you're interested, I can have one of my friends join the channel during a video and we can try and just we will be like it's going to be forbidden to use italian and we need to try and communicate using furlan and sicilian and let's see what the heck happens like i'm more than happy to try that but this is closer to my experience so sometimes furlan can be recognized it definitely is a separate language 100 percent uh, but sometimes can still be recognized and then in other situations when they just really go into the depth of the language becomes so unrecognizable that I know what I'm about to say is going to sound really strange now, but to be honest, I think I understand Spanish more easily, particularly the Argentinian variety, than I understand Furlan, which should tell you enough about how messed up a language categorization really is. Because then people say, yeah, but Furlan is just a dialect of Italian. No, it's not. And then Spanish is a different language. And yet, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. As usual, let's go see if did you, you have like a Wikipedia in Furlan. Let's see. So I found the Wikipedia page on the Furlan entry and it's written in Furlan. Let's see if I can understand it. Of course, I'm going to mispronounce it and I'm going to southernize it. But it is what it is. Furlan standard or Furlan normalisat. Oh, no, this is in English. Il furlan o coine o lenghe comune ben furlan normalisat ale il modello di lenghe scritte che al fas di riferimento alla comunità linguistiche furlane. So far, yeah, I understand it. Al vende coine, now I don't, letterarie, I don't know what ven means, e dal furlan dal friuli central con qualche differenza. Il lessiche alle plui sior, sior, I don't know how to pronounce it, di quel dal friul central par parce parce that must be the because i learned a minute ago che al chiape come synonyms dutis lis peraulis love the sound di che altris varietats che al mancin tal friend no no i'm gonna give up no idea too many letters that i don't recognize goodness gracious there is a c followed by a j <laughs> how the heck do you read that Oh, isn't it funny that it's actually easier for me to read Japanese? Okay, so definitely it gives me the feeling of I'm reading a foreign language, even though it's not foreign because it's from Italy. But Furlan has had some influences. It's, it's part of its own subgroup of Romance languages, and basically it's connected a little bit to Ladin, and it's connected to the southeastern uh, languages of Switzerland, including Romance. So it's a language that has been influenced by several other languages, and it's of course in a specific geographic location that justifies that. And as one last note at the conclusion of this video, I'd like to underline that, of course, just like in any regional variety in Italy, uh, there are differences, sometimes also relatively significant, uh, between different uh, cities. So someone in Udine speaks one way, someone in Trieste speaks a different way. And so it, even when we say Furlan, remember that all of these language communities and all of these cities have their own take and their own way, their own accent, which are of course a lot closer to each other than they would be to Sicilian, that's quite obvious, but they still should be considered as separate entities within one unique language continuum. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this. I'd like to continue exploring regional varieties and the languages of Italy and see if I can understand other regional languages, both in the south, the center, in the north, and more islands. Why not? If you're interested, please let me know, leave a comment, share the video, and as always, thank you for joining Metatron's Academy.